Hey everyone and welcome back to Finishing the Score where today you're going to be following me as I take you behind the scenes into my process for generating sheet music from a digital audio workstation project. A little background before we get started, I am using Cubase as my digital audio workstation and I am using Dorico as my sheet music program. Both of those products are by Steinberg. Uh, I'll be honest, one of the reasons that I wanted to have both of those products was that I thought that the transfer uh, for sheet music between them might be easier than uh, two random products. Um, as of now, Steinberg has not implemented any kind of easy communication between the two, um, but that's something that I am hoping that they develop in the future. All right, let's jump in. All right, here we are in my Cubase project file. Uh, a quick tour of what is important here. Markers, so each of these colored sections represents a section of the song. Uh, on the chord track, you can see that I have marked out the chords that I am using throughout the song. Signature is for the time signature, so you can see those signatures along here. Tempo, uh, you can also see the way that the tempo changes throughout the song. So I've got um, a couple of fermatas and things like that around here, which is where the tempo is changing, and then sections where it's actually um, different tempos. The way that I write songs in a digital audio workstation like Cubase is that that I have a piano accompaniment track or sometimes some other instruments, but generally it's piano. I will create my vocal MIDI. So I'll put the melody in there as MIDI. Um, and then once I am completely finished with the demo, I've, I've finished writing the lyrics or I've got lyrics from a collaborator, I will go ahead and record the lyrics over top there. Uh, that's what this recorded vocal is. Now, what we're gonna be doing today is exporting this MIDI out from Cubase into Dorico, and we're going to be creating sheet music from those. We are also going to be exporting the markers and the um, time signatures. Unfortunately, there is no way to export the chords. And here I'm looking at you, Steinberg, if you could make this a feature, if you could get chords to be able to transfer from Cubase to Dorico, that would be so valuable. All right, so one of the things that we wanna do here in Cubase before we move over to Dorico is to make sure that things are cleaned up a little bit. So I wanna make sure that all of my markers are in place and at the right locations. I believe I don't have any, any gaps or anything like that. Sometimes they can move around. The ends of those don't matter too much. The, the beginnings are key. I'm going to go ahead and check out the signature track um, often when you uh, copy and paste a section in Cubase, it'll go ahead and add a duplicate uh, time signature. Um, I actually noticed one of those right here. So it's 4-4 four, four at the beginning and it's, it becomes 4-4 four, four again here, uh, right in the middle of the pre-chorus. We don't need that information. Uh, but we do need 6-8 um, uh, over here. We have a section of the bridge that becomes 6-8 and then it goes back to 4-4 four, four, um, at the end of the bridge before going into the chorus again. So um, we have all of the time signatures we need and no extras. So here we have the vocal MIDI and the piano accompaniment. Um, let me just play those so you can hear how that sounds like uh, right at the beginning of the verse. So I essentially have a virtual piano on this MIDI track, the piano accompaniment, and I've got a, um, a tenor sax is my, uh, my MIDI of choice for vocals. Um, so those two lines I wanna be able to come through. So uh, in order to do the export, I'm gonna go ahead and select both of these tracks. I'm gonna go File, Export, MIDI File. All right, here we are on the export screen. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that these first five are unchecked. We don't need that information. Um, export markers, we definitely wanna make sure that's checked to get the marker track to come through. Export as type zero would make all of the MIDI tracks be on the same channel. We essentially don't want that to happen. Uh, export resolution, I, I generally leave that as is. If we selected export locator range, that would only export what was uh, selected by this gray bar at the top. So we're not going to go ahead and select that because we want the whole piece and we don't need delay either. So with just export markers selected, I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now we are done in Cubase and we're going to move to Dorco. All right, here we go. We are going to launch into Dorco to create the sheet music. I'm gonna go ahead and go to file, import, MIDI. 
All right, and here's where we get our uh, MIDI import options in Dorico. So I generally leave all of these checked up here. Um, use MIDI track names for instruments. That's gonna pull the names of the tracks from your Cubase project. If you go to quantization options, here's where you can tell it basically what, what is the smallest note size in your piece. Um, in my case, I have 16th notes and fill gaps. That's essentially going to eliminate any tiny rests between your, your notes that come from Cubase. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay there. Use split point for grand staff instruments. So this is for a piano, it's going to divide it at middle C with this uh, 60 here. Import CC64 as pedal lines. So if I had recorded some sustain in the MIDI, that would come in as pedal lines. I don't need that in my piece, so I can leave that off. I'm going to preserve note velocities and positions. Velocities means that when you import this MIDI from Cubase, any volume information that you had on those notes is going to continue um, being there in Dorico. So when you play it back, it'll still have the uh, dynamics that you intended. I don't need a player group for new players, and in this case, I don't need part layouts for new players. So I'm gonna hit okay. And here we go, we've got the imported MIDI. You can see here on the staves that it lists vocal MIDI and piano accompaniment. I don't actually need those on any of the staves. I'm gonna go ahead and go to setup, layout options, staves and systems, and up here, staff labels on first system or subsequent systems, I can just hit none and none and apply, and those go away, which gives me a lot more real estate on the page. Now, one of the things that you'll see here are these blue, they're called signposts here. These are the tempo markings and the way that Dorico has imported them is it, it basically has imported one on every beat. Um, so all of these are the same tempo, um, but then you can see over here uh, the way that it is uh, changing the tempo when there's a fermata or um, a retardando. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hide those. I go to view signposts, I'm just gonna say hide all signposts, and that's going to clean this up quite a bit. Now here we can see the markers that came through. This isn't actually the right formatting I want, but I'm really glad that it came through on the right bar so that I can visually see where, uh, where things are. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the formatting on those to what I would like it to be. I'm gonna change from page view to gallery view. And then this gives us a little bit of a cleaner uh, way to see everything. We can just scrub through um, left all the way to the right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I don't need any kind of a, uh, a marker at the beginning uh, to indicate that it's a, a, an intro. Um, but I am going to start here at bar five and uh, add a rehearsal mark. So this says A, but what I'd like for this particular sheet music is for people to know which is verse one, which is the pre-chorus, etc. So I'm going to have this say V1. So I'm gonna change this from sequence type, um, from letters to numbers. Um, that now is at a one because of this index, so for verse one, and I can add a prefix of V. And so now I have V1 listed at that location. So I'm gonna scrub through. All right, now we're going to check on time signatures. This should be pretty, uh, pretty good since we checked that in Cubase before we left, but here we got 4-4 four, four right at the beginning. Um, continues on with 4-4. Four, four. All right, and then at the correct location in the bridge, we've got it switching to 6-8 and back into 4-4 four, four right before the third chorus. So, great. All right, now we're gonna do key signatures. Easy enough at the beginning, this piece is in C major. All right, so my main key change in this piece is at uh, bar 93 right before the third chorus. I can go ahead and change the key signature to C sharp major. I will be back tomorrow to finish the rest of this. All right, I am back and we are about to do some cleanup on the notes. 
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start with cleanup on the vocal line here. Um, here's an example right off the bat. We've got a 16th note and a rest. This really should just be an eighth note. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at the quantize down here. I'm going to change it from eighth note to 16th. And that allows me to use the keyboard shortcuts to change things by lengths of a 16th at a time. So um, the shortcut here to change the length, the duration of this note is shift alt right arrow and so that makes it longer by the length of 1 16th and so I can kind of scrub through here and check that everything is the correct duration um, here I'm going to I'm going to move this um, one beat forward so I can do that by holding control alt uh, and then hitting left and then I change to shift alt right and now that is an eighth note so I can scrub through and do that. So here's a case where it looks like there's a duplicate note um, so I'm just gonna delete that one that probably just meant that in the piano roll in Cubase there were two notes on top of each other and I couldn't really see that that was the case. So here we're in a C minor feel. I'm not gonna change the key here. I'm gonna leave it as accidentals, um, but there are a couple of things in here that are not correct for spelling. You, you see here this, um, this note has come in as a, an F double sharp rather than a G. Dorico is best used with keyboard shortcuts. So if you're using Dorico, I highly recommend you take a look at the Dorico quick reference card. This is something that is provided by Dorico on their website and I can put the link in the description below. But it includes a lot of the shortcuts that I'm using. For example, shorten or lengthen by grid duration. That's what we were just doing to fix the note lengths. And what we're about to do is respell using note above or below. So this is going to change uh, the way that the accidentals are, sp are spelled on the note. So we can use alt dash or alt equals to move it up or down. So here we're going to go ahead and do alt equals. All right, now that we're into the chorus, we've got um, a C sharp major section. This is a prime example where the enharmonic respelling of notes is critical because it doesn't know necessarily whether to do the notes as flats or sharps. So here, got a couple that we need to respell. All right, we made it through the vocal line. Now we've got to do the same thing on the piano. All right, so here, one of the things I'm gonna do for the piano line is uh, make sure everything is playable. So this, in this case, this bar, um, it's actually everything's spread a little bit too far apart uh, for one hand to be able to perform. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the C's and I can hit Control Alt up to move them up an octave. And another thing to be careful about, specifically with a corded part like a piano part, is uh, note length. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and shorten this note so that we don't have it underneath the moving notes. Those are much clearer. We've got a chord, 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 and then moving notes here. All right, here's a case where one of the notes that I actually intended to be in the right hand ended up being in the left hand simply because of the way the MIDI split the note at middle C. So we can go ahead and click this note. If we hit Alt-N, that's gonna move it up. Alt-M is what moves it down if you have a case like that. So Alt-N moves that back up. And here's another note where I'm gonna shorten it to make it clearer what's going on. All right, that was a slog, but at long last, all of the notation is fixed. So I'm gonna go ahead and move to the next step, which in my case is adding the lyrics. All right, so we can go ahead and start with the lyrics by hitting the first note, hitting Shift L, and that brings up the lyrics popover. And if you're in the middle of a word, you can hit a dash and that'll move it to the next note so you can have multiple syllables.
And sometimes my midi doesn't exactly line up, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I've got um, enough notes here. So I've got two upbeats essentially at this location. In this case, I've got two notes on one single word. Uh, the O leading into the chorus is O Y. So let me go ahead and add a slur. Uh, that with the shortcut S there. And I'll go back to the lyrics and I can just hit space on that second note and we'll skip it. So here's a location where I am going to go ahead and add a fermata and there's going to be some dialogue at this location. I'm gonna hide these metronome marks because the fermata communicates that information. And at this dialogue, I'm going to add some text. I'm gonna change the formatting to bar numbers. I just like the look of that. And to make it a little bit smaller, I'm going to uh, just enter there. All right, and now we're on to some details. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the tempos. Um, so here, basically every place that I've got a fermata where in Cubase you can't have a fermata, you essentially just say, and now we're at uh, quarter note equals 69. We're gonna just change that fermata here and we're gonna hide those tempo markers. Here's a section where I want the the singer to have some freedom with how they play with the tempo. So uh, the term for that is cola voce. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that here using the text tool. So earlier in the video, I had hidden the signposts. I'm gonna go ahead and show the signposts for a moment because at this location, um, we have a we have an accelerando in bar 97 into bar 98 where we wanna be odd tempo. So I'm going to select that signpost, hit metronome mark shown, and I'm going to type in the text odd ah, tempo to get that back here. And then at this location, I'm gonna type in control tempo. Um, accelerando. And now I can go ahead and hide the signpost again now that I've got what I need. I'm going to go back to page view at this point. Zoom out a little bit. All right, we have got some sheet music. So I'm going to go into my project info, change the title from a file name to the name of the song. I'm going to add my name under composer. Now we've got the title and composer at the top. Um, Dorico will include also by default the name of the flow at the beginning of each section. Uh, in this case it's just a single song so the name of the flow isn't important. I can change that by going back to setup, layout options. Here on page setup if I go back to flows, change show flow headings to never and hit apply. I see at the top of the page here, it's showing the flow title. I can go ahead and change the flow title in setup. All right, and just like that, we have some completed sheet music. And the final step, go to print, uh, save out as PDF. All right, and there we go, completed PDF. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit like, and if you wanna follow along with more behind the scenes songwriting stuff, or tips and tricks, please hit subscribe. All right, see you guys next time. Bye. Finishing.